Hey everyone, Dr. Green here. Today we're going to start with some examples of multi-period production or inventory problems. We want to look at how they're modeled and solved and also why they're different, what makes them unique. So you'll see that there's really two things that make these problems unique. One is that they go across multiple periods, usually weeks or months or days. The other thing is that we have a new kind of constraint called a linking constraint uh, or a linking formula that ties periods together. So we want to make sure we model these all appropriately. And as always, the best way to do this is to see an example. So let's dive right in to Pig Skin Incorporated. It is a manufacturer of footballs and is looking to optimize their production schedule over the next six months. Uh, so there we go. Big takeaway number one, we have a number of periods we're going to cover. They currently have 5,000 footballs on hand. That's an initial inventory. And they know that any footballs kept in inventory during a month will cost them 5% of the monthly production cost per unit to store. Data for the next six months is given. Formulate an LP to minimize the total costs. So you'll see we have our data here. I've scaled everything by the thousand. So our initial inventory is just five, which means 5,000. Storage cost is 5%. We have a unit production cost for each month. We also have a production capacity. We have a monthly estimated demand, and we also have a monthly storage capacity. And basically, we want to decide how much we can build in every month, right? How many footballs can we manufacture in every month so that <clears throat> we are able to meet demand without exceeding our storage, and we want to minimize our costs over this whole thing, okay? So fundamentally, we have all our data in place, the choice that we want to make is how many units are produced. So let's start there. First, we have units produced. We are going to choose a number of units to produce in every month. We are going to put on those nifty red borders to our cells to, to mark our changing variables or the decisions we are making. So we are going to choose our units produced. Now, we do have a constraint related to these our units produced have to be less than our production capacity. So I am actually gonna cut and paste this down here. So units produced must be less than or equal to production capacity. Let's get that outline going, right? Uh, these are all gonna be less than or equal to. We'll center that all the way across and center it up. Okay, so our units produced are less than or equal to our production capacity. Now the way that you should approach multi-period problems is to start not just by thinking of the given data or the decisions you're making. You need to think about the process that flows through every period. For instance, <clears throat> we pick how many units we produce. That has to be less than our production capacity. After we've produced something, we also have units on hand, right? After production. We have some demand we have to meet. We'll have some ending inventory because we need to store what's left. And we'll also have some storage capacity that will constrain that. So every month we build footballs. We can't build more than we're capable of producing. We have some number that suddenly become available to meet or beat our demand. The leftovers are our ending inventory. And finally, we have a maximum storage capacity. So units on hand after production. Well, in this first month, right, units on hand after production is the number of units produced plus our initial inventory. Easy peasy, right? The other thing you do need to learn about multi-period problems is that the first period and the last period are often unique, as we'll see here in a moment. Hey, so then we have our demand. Hey, we have our demand here. This is in the thousands already, so I'm going to take it down here. I am going to paste it, cut and paste. We're gonna put that nice border around it. There we go, so we have our production capacity. We have our units on hand after production. Uh, I'm just gonna work down one here, right? One period here, and then we'll go back. Which must be greater than or equal to our demand, okay? Greater than or equal to our demand. This inequality is gonna be the same all the way across. That constraint's always gonna be the same, so no big deal. Okay, finally, we have our ending inventory. How many do we have left after the month has ended? Well, that's however we, many we have on hand after production minus our demand. 
Okay, so apparently now we have minus five, and we have a storage capacity in the thousands. This is similar to all these other, you can see we can store 10,000 footballs a month, and I must be less than or equal to my storage capacity. Great, okay, so I'm actually gonna take this and make this just a, a little cleaner, move it up here so that everything is close by each other. I'm gonna go ahead and format these cells, give them that full border so they look wonderful. So we have our first period fairly well organized here. Okay? Uh, we can move on and start looking at the second period now. Units produced, we're gonna choose that. It's less than or equal to my production capacity. The big question becomes this formula here. Okay? How many units do I have on hand after production? Well, what I really have is the number I've produced plus my ending inventory from the previous month. I have the number produced plus the ending inventory from the previous month. And this pattern follows through all the way down. Uh, in a similar fashion here, well, what's my ending inventory? We said it was my units on hand after production minus my demand. Uh, that's gonna stay the same all the way through. You'll see if we produce nothing, we just end up with negative things going on here, which is not really where we wanna be. Uh, we're gonna get to that when we solve this all out, and trust me, we'll be in good shape by the time we get our entire formulation done. Okay? The next thing we wanna do is work on our costs. I think we've addressed all of our choices in a period, right? We have all this, we know we're gonna have this ending inventory over here. So now we have to do our costs, right? And really, we have some things going on here. Uh, we have our production costs. We also have holding costs. Okay. Our production costs are very straightforward. It's how many units produced times how much it costs per unit to produce them in that month. Okay, So that's a very straightforward number. It's the same all the way across. Our holding costs are a little bit trickier right? Because the holding costs are how much we have left in inventory. So we want to look and say, well, this is our ending inventory times our production cost times this 5%. Because remember, we have this thing that says uh, any footballs kept in inventory during a month will cost them 5% of the monthly production cost per unit. So that's pretty easy. Now we have a bunch of negative costs here because of you know, how this is working out. Let's make sure this is all, oh, look, I didn't do that correctly. Uh, if we were in the classroom, you all would have caught that, told me to correct it. I'll fix that. See how I double check all my formulas here. I wanna run through and make sure that things are correct, uh, that things are matching up and sort of spot check. Okay. Uh, then generally, I will put a nice totals column right here. We will sum this up so that we can see what the total amount we're spending is. Those are our costs. And then we will sum the sums to get our total costs. Give it that nice double border that we all have come to know and love. Label it well. And we seem to be in good shape. We have a multi-period problem. It goes through every period. It manages my production. It manages my ending inventory. I've clearly mapped out my process. So let's save it and see what Solver says. We open up Solver. We want to minimize our costs by changing these cells. I'm going to go ahead and delete these two constraints that were in here. Add my new ones. My units produced must be less than or equal to my production capacity. mistyped something there. Uh, so let's go back and reselect these. My units produced, let's do this. My units produced must be less than or equal to my production capacity. My units on hand after production must be greater than or equal to my demand. And my ending inventory must be less than or equal to my storage capacity. Hey, I think I got everything in there. Simplex, make unconstrained variables non-negative. We are minimizing our total cost. So let's see what happens. 
solver is doing its magic, iterating through various solutions to find out how much this will cost us. Okay, solver found a solution. 1535.56. There we go. You can see this. These are actually multiplied by a thousand, so this is 1.5 million because of scaling. We'll double check. It looks like these are all less than or equal to. That's great. These are all greater than or equal to. That's great. And our storage is all less than or equal to, which is also great. Okay, uh, so we've worked this problem out, and this is your first exposure to a multi-period inventory type problem. Do remember the most important things with this problem are go period by period, link each period to the next period somehow. In this case, this is linked through the units on hand after production. Okay, this would be called our linking constraint right here. And always do the at least two periods to find a pattern. So you'll notice the first period was different because I had an initial inventory. The second through six periods, all their calculations were the same. I was able to drag all my formulas across. So oftentimes the first one or maybe one plus two periods are a little different and we have to evaluate those. So go ahead and review this problem and we should be good to go.